Hi guys and welcome to another episode. What we have on the bench tonight is an envelope. I mean nothing wrong with an envelope. Uh, it's a regular envelope uh, delivered to me from the United Kingdom. Uh, but it's the first time that I realized that a, a ZX Spectrum can fit in an envelope. And it really does fit. Uh, I have al already opened the envelope um, and indeed there is a ZX Spectrum inside but <laughs> I didn't expect this uh, I mean in an envelope at least uh, what I've been expecting is a small box or something proper packaging but anyways a ZX Spectrum can fit anywhere I guess um, I can see a weird logo up there looks like the uh, letters are thicker or I have to check it with another model uh, the faceplate is in pretty bad shape I don't know um, we, 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 sh we should uh, investigate I guess together um, if uh, this is a working unit or not or what is needed to bring it back to life so yeah let's uh, let's get started and really curious to, to check the um, the logo and I mean against another uh, case uh, another logo from another computer so is it me or this one is uh, more slim and wider and the other one is thicker and shorter you tell me well I think it's different logo and uh, my best guess is this is an old model um, could be from the case used for uh, ZX Spectrum 16K maybe, I don't know but uh, it's definitely a different logo well, this is a comes as a surprise I haven't seen this before um, yeah, but it's a different logo on a ZX Spectrum and I guess uh, again I'm guessing it should be something like very old from the early versions I assume uh, 82, 83 tops so let's um, check it we can see the uh, sticker underneath indicates this is a 48k model screws are missing uh, looks like uh, it has been abandoned, abandoned for years I zoom so let's uh, open it up and see if we can make some tests and yet another surprise this spectrum is full of surprises the ribbon cables the membrane looks like it's new or manufactured um, later like really later like nowadays or something but um, I really don't know I don't have this information from the previous owner but it looks like uh, fully transparent um, uh, membrane for the keyboard and uh, it looks uh, intact and should be working wow that is something but of course this makes me happy because uh, I won't have to change it now we have a damaged here for, uh, on this other case and you can see it's not uh, fully transparent it's not flexible at all and you can uh, crack it uh, using your hand easily not flexible not reliable at all this one is the one we've seen uh, coming as a standard um, in spectrums uh, until well now unless the previous owner have changed it again and uh, I didn't know about that let's go now under the hood and uh, yet another surprise um, I haven't seen upper RAM ceramic chips so far on a spectrum we can see the spider because uh, on the CPU because uh, this is an issue 2 coming from 82 as um, uh, as I figured um, the um, power input socket is broken as far as I can see it's loose or broken or both so I have to replace that um, and the 
41 16s the RAM chips have been um, replaced with 52 90s um, we can conduct uh, several um, improvements wow the um, upper RAM chips are quite impressive I can see the previous owner have recapped the machine but not the whole thing so you can tell the difference this is the old one that's the new one um, some of them have been replaced some of them haven't been replaced so I'm gonna do that right afterwards and take care of uh, the um, power input circuit that is needed or suggested for um, issue 2 so we have one, two, three capacitors for sure and uh, maybe a heatsink over the ULA and we'll see what else we can do uh, of course the edge connector looks bad um, I'm gonna clean it up later on but first let's start with uh, the power input uh, socket uh, so then we can at least uh, yeah, I found one uh, it's not new but it will do um, because I want to give it I want to power it up and see what happens and see if we can get a picture at all now if I get to if I manage to get the right focus right there you can see it was broken underneath pieces of the uh, power input jack was all over the place so I have prepared the holes to put this other one and then we can fix the DC to DC converter the little trick we do um, and yeah of course uh, clean the edge connector uh, to keep um, the uh, current for the lower RAM stable um, which is going to follow the replacement of the socket but now that I have changed the uh, input uh, power input socket this is the old one the broken one I found out that it was so loose it created kind of on and off state all the time so TR4 has already been blown and or fried and um, I have just replaced that as well I was lucky I had some of these uh, ZDX650 in my spares and then now I have to change the order um, deal with the capacitors and then we can go back into the uh, uh, power supply mod uh, which is needed in order to filter um, the voltage for the lower arm up there so um, the uh, ZDX650 is in place we have a terrible image I assume this is the Sinclair logo on the screen a really bad image so we can later on after all the fixes are done we can try to adjust those variable resistors over there uh, which uh, can uh, fine-tune the um, signal uh, either it is coming from um, uh, the composite mod which we're going to prepare uh, again later um, or uh, the TV uh, modulator itself so I'm trying to play a bit with those right now but no luck so far so we have to uh, change some cups and uh, try again later uh, with the um, video mod uh, also in place um, so we can get a better image hopefully um, from um, from the video circuitry but now before we do all that uh, let's deal with the basics here we have a 270 ohm resistor uh, which is going to be replacing the R60 which is uh, 100 ohm uh, ohms now and um, a capacitor uh, which uh, is going to be placed somewhere there um, on the um, 
the positive leg will be uh, soldered to the uh, C34 and the uh, negative lead to the R58 uh, resistor on the side. Sorry, but I couldn't resist. I have changed the C44 already. Recapped. I couldn't even look at this old one. Uh, yellowed by time. And uh, we are playing with chances here after all these years. So, getting back to the input circuit. Here is our old uh, 100 ohms um, resistor removed and we have ready to be um, in place the 270 ohms resistor down there uh, what needs to follow is the capacitor uh, as we said positive lead on the um, on the side of the capacitor uh, have to change this one as well um, and the other one uh, uh, the uh, resistor next to it which is R58 uh, I don't know really why, but I love issue 2 spectrums because you have plenty of things to do. This capacitor over here is uh, 4.7 microfarads. You can see we have changed uh, C64 and uh, C44 down there next to RAM. We have checked the voltages. Um, we have replaced the um, power in jack and uh, we have replaced uh, R60 as well and this modification here allows us to connect the spectrum to modern TV or AV3 in most cases or a monitor or composite signal in any case now I'm trying to play a bit around with um, the trimmers um, and the uh, variable resistors to get the best uh, picture I can get um, you have to be patient with this um, it's a tiny operation, uh, one degree here, one degree uh, there, in order to get the best results, just be patient and you'll manage to get it. I'm not very impressed with the uh, white balance, um, as you can tell, it's somehow bluish, uh, it can turn to yellowish, but um, I'm going to keep playing around with the trimmers um, and the resistors as we are trying to fix this um, yeah slight slightly turn it twist it around and get the best picture that I can get um, and that's the way to do it um, um, for now this is the best picture I could get um, I don't think it gets um, any improved signal, I mean better for now so I have to be patient maybe I can do this later on again um, chances are uh, we cannot get any better picture than this one uh, but I'll keep playing with this um, in order um, to get um, the right color balance but of course you cannot do much without proper um, keyboard operation right so this uh, I have removed the faceplate as you can see from this weird uh, thick uh, logo spectrum and I think the uh, rubber underneath the keys are filthy that's all I can say I don't know if this is chocolate or tobacco or something but it's filthy I have to give it a good wash a good clean I think it's stuck underneath could damage the membrane uh, potential damage to the membrane uh, so I'm going to wash it and uh, probably I'm going to change it because this is kind of weird uh, looking again greenish uh, old uh, rubber um, keys and um, I think um, yeah I'm gonna change it along with the faceplate and so we have here uh, both washed the old one this one uh, it's been clean but this is again some kind of weird old um, mem um, rubber uh, greenish kind of uh, very very thin this one is the one we used to know the blue one and apparently the instructions 
are faded uh, over the old one. So I'm going to keep this blue one and replace the old one uh, along with the new faceplate. Um, this one. And um, yeah, I'm going to change the rubber keys as well. So we're going to have a brand new or almost brand new uh, ZX Spectrum back in, uh, back in business. So uh, you can tell the difference. This is very old. I'm pretty sure it comes from the era of, of the very first uh, issues um, that were out in the markets. What I can strongly suggest is to place a thin copper like this um, heatsink over the ULA chip, which gets hot, really hot, um, because this one fits nicely, and put a, a check mark or an X if it doesn't work on the speaker. It's a good practice. Um, now I'm going to prepare the keyboard with some uh, double-sided tape and uh, try to put everything back together. I want to go back to the TV modulator again and show you another surprise. Uh, as you can see I placed the signal uh, connection here in the ground. This um, trimmer for the frequency has been broken into pieces after 40 years or so. Um, so I had to put this um, mod on the RCA uh, I mean to get the composite out because this is absolutely useless so I, I couldn't uh, twist it, I couldn't turn it uh, one way or the other little pieces fell everywhere around the uh, modulator box so I guess it was a one way solution for me but overall I am happy um, now that I think of it and I'm looking at it um, it's a nice uh, piece of uh, equipment. Uh, after 40 years, uh, we managed to get this picture as the best picture we could get. Um, probably I should get back and replace the LM um, chip uh, at some point, but now I can call it a wrap. I'm happy with the results. And um, yeah, as I said, issue 2 is very interesting. You can do stuff, you can twist things around, you can modify and improve things like the picture or the um, DC voltage. Uh, so the fun with the ZX Spectrum never ends, uh, I guess, after all these years and the years to come. Um, so I, as I said, I'm going to call it a wrap. I'm going to thank you guys uh, for watching. Um, I think um, it was a fruitful evening for me. I hope you enjoyed this and if you like this stuff, you can always subscribe. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell so you get all the notifications for new videos I, and from my side I hope I can always find the, the time to make more videos like this fixes and uh, improvements, modifications, you name it so thank you, bye